So before we start we need to say that this is going to be a little experimental series of videos to see how well we can convey certain ideas and theories. Our main reason for making these is to help boost our grades for our degree. Unfortunately, due to many different reasons, we've been focusing on one project over the others, meaning we're doing really well in one area and not so well everywhere else. Also, a lot of the information that is presented in this video is from a website called Simple Psychology. There'll be a link to the website with the video so you can find the information. Okay, so with that aside, let's get on with the video. Jean Piaget was a Swiss developmental psychologist known for his epistemological studies with children. In 1936, Piaget described his work as genetic epistemology, or the origins of thinking. His theory came about when he became intrigued with the reasons given by children for incorrect answers to questions that required logical thinking. He summarised the incorrect answers showed great differences between the way fully grown adults and young children thought about certain situations and questions. Before Piaget's theory was published, it was widely assumed that a child's mind was far less competent than an adult's. Piaget proved otherwise. The goal of Piaget's theory is to explain the mechanisms and processes a child goes through to be able to learn and develop into an adult that can think and reason based upon hypotheses that create for themselves. Piaget's theory has three basic components. Schema, the building blocks of knowledge, adaptation, assimilation, accommodation, and equilibrium, and finally the stage of development. To quote Piaget, a schema is a cohesive repeatable action sequence possessing component actions that are tightly interconnected and governed by a core meaning. But in layman's terms, schemata is a way of organising knowledge. Piaget called them the basic building block of intelligent behaviour. Try to think of schema as index cards being filed away in the brain, making up a catalogue of information on specific stimuli that can be called upon when needed. So when a child's existing schemata are capable of explaining the environment around them, for example at home, this is said to put them in a state of equilibrium or mental balance. So using this information we can put this theory to some video games. The first one that springs to mind is Pokemon, a game based around capturing and battling different creatures. Game Freak, the developers of Pokemon, use this theory to help children identify and catalogue certain Pokemon with their corresponding breed type and abilities. As an example, let's take Charmander, a little red salamander that has a little flame on its tail and an adorably cute face. These features tell the player of the game that Charmander is a fire type Pokemon, as the colour red symbolises heat and the little flame on its tail shows it can use flame attacks. Then there's Squirtle, a little blue turtle that has a turtle shell on its back and also an adorably cute face. Squirtle's features tell the player that it's a water type Pokemon symbolised by the colour blue and the turtle shell. So if the player were to have a Squirtle, and their opponent were to have a Charmander, the player would learn that the Squirtle would beat the Charmander because water beats fire. Much like in a game of rock, paper, scissors, where scissors beats paper. So after playing the game for a while, the player will start to assimilate the schemata to learn that certain attributes will equate to certain Pokemon being of a certain element type or breed, entering into a state of equilibrium where they are able to understand and progress comfortably. However, the further the player progresses, the more they will notice that some of the Pokemon don't conform with their previously learned schema, making them accommodate new schema in order to deal with the change in stimuli, or in this case, Pokemon. This becomes the cycle of the game. The player learns a new schema, they get comfortable entering into a state of equilibrium. The schema then changes, making them accommodate. They then get comfortable again, entering a new state of equilibrium, and this continues until the game ends or they get bored. Now this is where the theory's final part comes in, the stages of development. As a quick disclaimer, we'd recommend reading about this part using the link provided with the video as we may not be able to fully explain it using video game analogies, but we will try our best. The stages of development is the part of the theory that shows the growth of an individual as a result of the adaptation process repeating over an extended period of time. The best way to describe it with video games is again Pokemon. Think back to when you first beat the Elite Four using your team of six highly trained Pokemon and then learning that a new Pokemon game was being released with 150 new Pokemon to find and learn about and having to repeat, repeat over the space of a few years with each game getting more complex, mixing the Pokemon types to make new combinations that the player has to figure out how to beat and then utilise. This keeps happening until the player has developed beyond the stages of the original game, reaching a point where, if they go back to the original game they played, they would find it too easy because it would just be the simplest form of the game. Like if you were to read a children's book the first time as a kid and then go back to reading it again many, many years later as an adult, after reading countless books, it would become too easy to read. And that's it. That's the basics of this theory put into a video game form. If we missed anything out or used misinformation in the video, then please let us know. Thank you for listening and we hope you enjoyed the video.